the unspeakable things Genghis Khan did to his enemies. All of us have watched gore movies at some point, and there may even be some of you who would proudly claim they can easily digest any graphic violence. They might even have some creative ideas of torture, but I can assure you, none of them would even come close to what this man actually did to his enemies. So, from using live humans as shields, to cutting up an entire horde of prisoners, these are the unspeakable things that the infamous Genghis Khan did to his enemies. In the pages of history, there emerges a figure whose name strikes fear into the hearts of even the bravest soldiers. Genghis Khan was born in the 13th century, and it's safe to say that his rise to power cast a shadow of terror over the Eurasian continent. He hailed from a society where dominance was asserted through violence, and he himself was born in the crucible of brutality, emerging as a formidable leader from his humble beginnings. Khan and violence went hand in hand, but normal violence did not cut it for the Khan, especially when it came to certain people. Take for instance the Khwarezman Empire, which faced the wrath of Khan in all its glory, seeing how one of Khan's most bone-chilling story of violence is his conquest of Termas. In the summer of 1220, Khan, along with his generals Subutai and Sept, took a break from their conquests in the mountains south of Samarkand. When autumn arrived, they set their sights on the city of Termes in southern Uzbekistan. Despite Khan offering the city a chance to surrender, its residents, proud of their defenses, foolishly refused and took the Mongols up for a challenge. But you would have already guessed that it was barely a challenge for the ruthless Mongols, seeing how the siege lasted for two days until the city finally fell. Upon infiltration of Termes, Khan's orders were simple and ruthless. Every citizen, regardless of age or gender, was to be rounded up in an open field and slaughtered by his soldiers. As the massacre unfolded, a desperate woman attempted to escape, but was captured. In those final moments of desperation, she played the only card she had and hoped the Mongols would let her live. The woman claimed to have swallowed a large pearl and was convincing the soldiers to spare her until she passed it. This was a pretty great expectation from the most ruthless army known to mankind. And of course, Khan's soldiers weren't gonna wait for this woman to find a toilet. Ignoring her plea, they executed her on the spot. But just for the sake of it, they opened up her insides and actually found more than one pearl. When Khan found out about this woman, he imagined there might be many more like her who would have swallowed their jewels. And since there wasn't any way to narrow down the exact people, Khan ordered his soldiers to cut up every single person and search their insides for more treasure. This tale would have sent chills down your spine. Some of you might even be disgusted by it. But the fact is that back in those days, actions like these were what made Khan the most indomitable general to ever set foot on the planet. Under Khan's rule, the Mongol Empire expanded at an unprecedented rate, stretching from the hills of Mongolia to the heart of Europe. Conquering vast pieces of territory, his empire consisted of lands that spanned from Russia, Ukraine, and Hungary to Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, and Kyrgyzstan. It reached as far east as China and Korea, and extended into Southeast Asia, Persia, Syria, Turkey, and India. But it wasn't just the sheer size of his empire that struck fear into the hearts of his enemies. It was the ruthlessness with which he built it. Khan's military campaigns were marked by unspeakable brutality, as entire cities were laid to waste and mountains of skulls bore witness to his conquests. The terror of the Mongol horde was not just a legend, it was a reality for those who found themselves in its path. The mere mention of his name was enough to send entire cities into a state of paralyzing terror, as rumors of his approach spread like wildfire. In the eyes of those who lived in fear of him, Genghis was not just a conqueror, he was a force of nature and the very definition of terror and destruction. In fact, Khan's path of annihilation started against his own family. At just 14 years old, Khan did something unthinkable. He killed his own half-brother. The reason? His half-brother had selfishly eaten all the food, leaving none for the rest of the family. 
In a society where resources were scarce, this act was seen as a grave betrayal. So, feeling deeply wronged, Genghis took matters into his own hands and ended his half-brother's life. Surprisingly, instead of being horrified, Khan's mother just scolded him for his actions. This reaction shows how violence was accepted as a part of everyday life in their society. By the time he was 20, Khan had already become a skilled military leader. When the Tatars poisoned his father, he led his clan in a brutal retaliation, and the Tatars faced the full force of Khan's fury as he sought vengeance for his father's death. In the heat of battle, Khan's orders were clear and merciless. Every Tatar male taller than a wagon wheel pin was to be executed. But we're only scratching the surface right now because as Khan grew older, his penchant for terror grew exponentially. Khan's notorious mountain of skulls is the best example to start with. That's right, instead of the famous Egyptian pyramids, just imagine ones made of human skulls, right in the heart of China. These eerie structures stood near Beijing, a city besieged by the Mongols for three long years. But looking at how things turned out in the end, I'd say the people of Beijing shouldn't have bothered to put up with Khan's cruelty for such a long time, because even inside the city, things were desperate. People were dying of starvation, to the point that they had to resort to cannibalism, but even this extreme measure couldn't save them. Khan's siege of the city led to tens of thousands of deaths, and all of them were glorified into 50-foot-tall pyramids of skulls. The Mongols had a simple message, surrender and live resist and die. And here's a chilling fact for you. Under Khan's leadership, an estimated 5 to 10% of the world's population died because of his wars. And these weren't even far away deaths caused by bombing or artillery. These were brutal one-on-one -on -one encounters with Mongol warriors, each one armed and dangerous. But these aren't just common innocent folks we're talking about. Khan had special methods of execution for people of importance, and all of them were designed to make sure no one would dare defy the Mongols again. One of his most gruesome techniques involved pouring molten metal into a person's body, often through their mouth or down their throat. This horrifying fate befell Inalka, the governor of Otrar, who had dared to attack Khan's empire. While some accounts suggest the silver was poured into his eyes and ears, the common practice of the time was to force it down the victim's throat. This heinous display of power served as a chilling warning to anyone who dared to oppose Khan's authority. Trampling was another brutal method employed by Khan and his forces. During the siege of Baghdad, after the city surrendered, al Mustasim, the Abbasid Caliph, met a grisly end. He was wrapped in a rug and subjected to the merciless hooves of Mongol horses until he breathed his last. This has to be one of the worst ways of kicking the bucket. And I don't know about you, but just imagining it gives me goosebumps. And hey, if you got the creeps too, make sure to like the video, hit the subscribe button, and click the bell icon for more of the same. Moreover, the Mongols were known to be creative, especially when it came to setting examples out of live humans. They even managed to utilize the wheel as a tool of torture and death. Victims would be bound to the wheel, their limbs spread out, and then repeatedly struck until their bones shattered. Left to die slowly from their injuries, they faced a fate of excruciating pain and suffering. While some accounts go as far as suggesting that the wheel was rolled over fire or rough terrain to increase the agony, we don't know if it's really true. Whatever the case, I think we can all agree that any other option would be better than being rolled to death alive. But in this case, the next best option was slavery under Khan, and you can guess that wasn't much better either. To ensure absolute loyalty and eliminate potential threats, Khan resorted to forced migrations and slavery as integral parts of his empire-building strategy. In wars where complete annihilation was not ordered, captured soldiers were often enslaved, while aristocrats and nobles were systematically eliminated to prevent future uprisings. Children captured in these campaigns were forced into Mongolian traditions and trained as soldiers from a young age. They were seen as less likely to hold grudges and were eventually brainwashed so much that they would forget their roots and live only to serve the Mongol army. However, not all captives were deemed suitable for military service. Some were relegated to hard labor or even used as cannon fodder in future conflicts due to their unreliability. Reports from historians suggest that Genghis Khan had a particular interest in capturing and holding beautiful women as captives for himself. He often married the wives or daughters of defeated enemy leaders, further solidifying his dominance. 
Skilled artisans and technicians from conquered cities were also enslaved to serve the Mongol Empire, forced to contribute to its growth and development under duress. Still, we'll have to agree that this doesn't sound so bad, especially when you hear the third option, which is truly terrifying. One of Khan's most brutal strategies was the use of human shields. Yes, actual live humans used to fend off arrows. After conquering an enemy's territory, the Mongols would gather survivors, including both soldiers and civilians, to serve as shields during the coming battles. These lambs for sacrifice would be marched at the very front of the Mongol army, shielding them from enemy arrows while approaching the enemy forces. The enemy, unaware that they were shooting at their own people, would rain down arrows on the approaching Mongol army. This not only reduced the effectiveness of the enemy's defense, but also caused confusion and hesitation among their ranks. Facing their own comrades, enemy soldiers would often hesitate to engage in combat, leading to a drop in morale and making them vulnerable to fierce Mongol attacks. And as brutal as that may sound, trust me, we're still not close to the peak of Mongol savagery. For that, we have to look at the Mongols' conquest of ancient Russia, where Khan's most trusted commanders, Sev and Subutan, were wreaking havoc all over the land. These generals were trained as Khan himself, and they conquered lands all over Central Asia before coming to Ukraine. They faced off against a strong alliance of Rus' principalities, who were basically ancient Russians. At first, it seemed like the Rus were going to be victorious, as they seemed to be chasing the Mongols away, but that was all part of their plan. They lured the Rus into a trap at the Kalka River, but before they could wipe the tribe out, another nomadic group called the Cumans got there first. As expected, they were easily defeated by the Mongols, and next up in line for the slaughter were the Rus. Now there's some debate about the numbers, but it's clear the Rus had more troops, and this was the case in most of the Mongol conquests. Still, the Mongols were just better fighters, faster and smarter, to the point that one Mongol soldier was enough for multiple enemy soldiers. Of course, that meant bad news for the Rus, and while their common soldiers were killed off immediately, some Rus princes offered to retreat in exchange for safety. The Mongols agreed, but knowing their knack for setting examples, you'd have guessed by now that they were lying through their teeth. However, it wasn't as simple as a straight beheading, because certain laws and traditions prevented them from spilling the blood of royals. So instead of shedding noble blood directly, they built a scaffold placed the nobles on it, covered it up with wood, and literally set up a victory party on top of it. So while the Mongols celebrated their victory all night, drinking and trampling in the most barbaric way ever, the nobles were slowly crushed to death underneath their footsteps. That having their heads cut off seemed like heaven in those moments. And with this, we have reached the end of this video. If you don't want to miss more such videos that will send shills down your spine, make sure to hit the subscribe button and ring the bell icon.